Right, so Thunderpay, Thunderpay, open up one, open up the other. Okie dokie. Here it is, my little blue lines, ba 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 ba. So this is really meant to be a demo, um, and you know, and it works. I mean, it's a, it's a demo, but it shows it shows how you do this L2 stuff with multiple users, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have some channels here. Uh, I can look at these channels. This is, there's a lot of action that goes on in the background. Fund sent, fund received. Um, and so the bottom line, I'll just let's let's start one from. I wanted to show you this so that you just I don't know. Anyway, so at the top here, I've obviously got help. Ba ba ba. I've got the old, my old channels. I can add a channel. And then I've got my home page. Okay. Now let's say I want to add a channel. So I've got two people here. I've got Paddy and Popo. Popo's the guy on the right, and Paddy's the guy on the left. So I can start a channel with any of my Maxima contacts. So I'm going to say, like, I'm going to start a channel with Popo. And when you start a channel, what basically means is that you both put in a certain amount of money. I can say nothing. I can put in money and you don't put any, or you can put in money and I don't put any. That's fine. But the bottom line is, let's say I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in three, and you're going to put in four minima. I'm going to say I'm going to request a new channel. You're about to ask Popo to start a new channel. Okay, boom. Please wait. Contacted Popo. Popo contacted successfully. Okay, cool. I'm going to return to my home page. When I return there, you'll see here I've got a, a requested to start a channel. It's not open yet. I can't send anything. And Popo has another request. He goes, hey, channel request. You can have as many of these channels as you want with as many different users, even the same user. Popo can accept or deny. So Popo is going to say, uh, it tells you here, this is the money. You've got to put in four out of a total of seven. Yeah. Again, don't get too excited about the look and feel or any of that. This is a functional application. Clearly, there's different ways that we could do this. So I'm going to accept the channel. Now, the way this works is that there's lots of messages being sent backwards and forwards in the background. Uh, and it's running over Maxima, which is not completely geared to speed, as I've said many times. And if I, get, I think the thing that slows it down is that whenever I try to send a message, the first thing I do is I say, hey, can I get a hold of you? It's called an ACK message, an acknowledgement message. And then he replies and says, yeah, 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 I'm here. That's a SYNAC message. And I go, oh, okay, great. Then I send another message saying, okay, let's start a channel. And to actually start a channel involves sending about six messages backwards and forwards. So that took about 10 seconds, which is pretty good, frankly. Um, if it wasn't running over Maxima, I could probably make it four or five times quicker. But fuck it, that's fine. So he's accepted the channel, and we've now got a new channel open. So if I look at logs, it'll show, look, I requested a channel. The request was accepted. We posted the funding transaction, and they've seen the funding coin. Interestingly, both of you have slightly different logs because it's like I requested it from you. So you got a request, then you accepted the channel. I'm the one that posted the channel. So this is all about not sending transactions until I have a, I, 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 we, we swap transactions with us and I don't sign anything until I have the transaction that allows me to get my money back. Yeah, so it's not like I sign a transaction and I send it to you and I say, hey, you sign it and post it. That's not how it works. I have to be sure that we both have, we both have to be sure that the person has signed the correct piece of data and I check all of that before we do anything. And in fact, to initiate the channel, I have to create three transactions, a funding, a trigger, and a settlement, and I can and I have to sign them in reverse order so that then I, I give him the signed settlement he signs that then i sign the uh, the um, the trigger and then he signs that and then when we both got both of us have got signed trigger and settlement transactions do we actually sign the funding and then the funding gets sent so that we haven't done we've done one on-chain transaction at the moment that's the posting funding transaction that's all that's happened at the moment we've done one transaction between us and now let's see so i'm going to say right i want to send him 0 0.001 Okay, and you can send, so let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's appeared on that side, nine. All right, so it is about, but the reason is that there's so many maximum messages. Each, each, each maximum message is about two seconds. Um, and there's a lot of messages being sent in the background. So the speed uh, is not actually because of the protocol. If I was doing this on a centralized chat server, I could do the, the message sending much quicker. Um, and actually, the signing of the transactions takes a couple of seconds as well. So that's fine. 
So here it is. Now I've got 2.99 and he's got a four point thingy. If I go to logs, if I go to logs, he's received some funds. I've sent some funds. Nothing has happened on chain now, but both of us have transactions required to pay us. So let's go again. Uh, now I'm going to send him something. So I'm going to send from this side. He's going to get 0.1. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I see it, eight, nine. Yeah, so it's about eight or nine seconds to send. But these are valid transactions. This is like these are happening correctly. There's, you know, you can do this. And interestingly, at a point two, I'll send it back. This is not, uh, there's no, um, no one else is involved in this, just me and just him. Now, what's important is that Maxima was written with convenience and security in mind, but also with scale. And it's it, when we had this chat uh, in the dev chat, I didn't mention this, but it's like, it's not scale for me. I can't have a thousand Maxima users. I can have 20 Maxima users, but everybody can be sending messages to everybody at the same time. Maxima is really good about that. Yeah, because it's decentralized and there's no central thingy. We could have a thousand of these running and everybody could be sending at the same time. We could have 10,000 of these running and everybody could be sending them at the same time, which means that we could be doing 10,000 transactions per second. Yeah, this is all it is. And so now, now we've got a channel open. I can do this as often as I like. One. And it's sending. D -d -d -d. Can't, do, can't close it. Yeah. So I can see logs, but I can't do stuff. It cops that up, right? And then we're going to see how you can close the channel as well. So when you, so those are there. So let, let's have a look at my old channels here. I had two channels here that I created. There's two ways of closing a channel. Um, there's the simple way, which is basically you send one transaction. And so the, the, the thing about this is that in the normal state of affairs, that's right. So let's go back here. So let's say I want to close this channel. This one here, logs, the one we've been doing. I've sent, sent, then I received, then I sent, then I found, then I sent, received. Obviously, you can do this, uh, you know, Mac, the machines could be doing this to each other, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's say I wanted to close that channel. Um, what was this one? This is that one, right? So I can say close. Now, there's two ways to close a channel. There's the cooperative way which basically means, okay, I can get hold of you. You can get hold of me. We both know how much is in the channel. Nobody's going to fuck about. <clears throat> so I should be getting 2.809 or whatever, uh, and you should be getting uh, 4.1911. So you can close the channel cooperatively. And what's nice about that, close co-op. Are you sure you want to close the channel? Okay, bing. There it is. And uh, it's done. Closing channel. And I can see it now. You posted the closed co-op transaction. Okay. Mm -mm. And there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Closing channel. So we're both closing the channel. So, oh, and then it's done. So let's go and have a look at here. Boom. Logs. So what happened here is we had our little thingy. So there was one transaction we posted. Then we saw the funding coin. Then we sent each other. These are all maximum messages. Sending money backwards and forwards. That could go on forever. 1,000 of those. Then I requested a co-op close. I said, hey, man, let's just be nice and close this channel. Mm -hmm. Not this one. It would have been this one. So post co-op close. So I requested a close. He said, yes, let's do it. And so there was only one transaction sent, one to start the channel, one to close the channel. Funding coin spent straight from the funding coin, payout coin found, blah, 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 channel closed successfully. So that's the ideal situation. I can send one to open the channel and I can send one transaction to close it instantly. I don't have to worry about anything. It's like in the next block, I get paid. It's fast. It's totally cool. Now, the other situation is where you, it's not a cooperative close. And the reason and, and the truth is that close unilateral or you can close the channel unilaterally, which means that either one of us can do it. And I don't. So what I'm saying is imagine his computer goes offline. Imagine he disappears. Imagine I can't get hold of him. That's really the scenario. Yeah. Um, or let's say he's being dodge. Let's say he tries to send another transaction. The point is I have the latest signed transaction with the latest amounts of money. And whatever you now do, there's nothing you can do to fuck with that. Yeah, that's that's the point about this. But when I want to do a close unilateral, boom, OK, what this means is that I don't speak to you. I haven't asked you to close the channel. I mean, I, maybe I did, because if I, if I try to ask you and you're not there, it says, hey, I couldn't get hold of him. So he couldn't close the channel cooperatively. That could be for totally non nefarious reasons. It's like, hey, his, his phone's not online. Try a bit later. That's fine. 
Uh, or it could be because he's like, unplug the computer and said, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want him to be able to close the channel. No. So, closing channels. What does this mean now? I'm, yeah, async transaction mine. There it is. It's posted. <laughs> so, post trigger close. And this is more complicated. This is the whole point of L2. And what this does is that it says, right, I'm starting the definite close and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'm going to be doing the latest update and the latest settlement. So I have to post trigger, update, and settlement. So now what it does is at first it posts the trigger, which is what spends the funding transaction, and I've now got a trigger transaction. Then you've got to wait. Yeah, so valid trigger L2 coin found. I've got to wait for it to be deep enough for me to post the latest update. The real trick that L2 does is that the settlement transaction can only be posted after 30 minutes. And the update transaction can be posted after five blocks, after five minutes. Yeah. I mean, it could be a day. It should be like a day. I couldn't be fucked to make it a day because otherwise I wouldn't be able to test it. But the bottom line is what it means is that I have the latest update and I can always post the latest update transaction before you can post any of the settlement transactions. And so right now, let's see, let's refresh. Let's have a look at this one. We're looking. Yeah, we've both seen the thingy. And so now we wait, we wait for blocks. And this process, if we look at an old one that I did, I think this one, no, was it this one? Yeah, so this is what it will look like. Yeah. So I posted a funding transaction, then we sent some funds to each other. This is an old one, old channel. Then, okay, and interestingly, that as soon as we've agreed, we can start sending each other money, even before the funding coin has been processed. That's nice. So once me and you have started the channel, and once we've got all our transactions, we can start. We can start sending. We don't even have to wait for the first coin to be done. See, that was at one fifteen, right? And then ten seconds later, it's like, right, I, I'm getting out of here. I don't want this channel. So I posted the trigger. Then it's like, right, funding coin, fine, funding coin spent. Then it found the trigger L twos. Then I posted the latest update transaction, which was on sequence three because we did three transactions. And then you wait for the sequence. You need to wait 30 blocks. Yeah, I check every five blocks. I check every five blocks for any of this stuff is happening. And then I posted the latest settlement transaction. And then we both got paid out. And this basically ensures that the settlement is the payout and the update is this is the latest version. And any update that, and you can post your update, which is to a previous transaction, but I can always post mine on top of yours because I have the higher sequence number. Um, and that's it really, gentlemen. So now we can just create channels. If I look here, it's still closing. Yeah, this will take about half an hour to close. Yeah, so, oh, and then we go. I've already got the trigger L2, so it got, it got that. And so now I've posted the latest update. It's still closing. So to close a channel uncooperatively takes about half an hour, and to close the channel cooperatively is instant. Um, and that, uh, I think I did some quite nice help there. That is it, gentlemen. It 